Hello, welcome to the Cloud Factory. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this notched collar or also called tailor collar. Okay, this type of collar is called like that, notched, because it has a notch here and is formed by two pieces on each side, the lap of and the collar itself. It is so popular because it allows you to make almost any kind of variation you want for the design. Let me show you some examples. As you can see here, you can change the size of the lapel and also you can change the shape of the collar. You can make it so thin as in a shirt design or you can make it so wide, for example, if you want to make a coat or a jacket. Also, you can change the space of the crossing. As you can see here in the first example, we have about one inch. In the middle one, we have more. And in the last one, we have a big crossing space, which is used for coats mostly. And these are the possibilities for this design. Now, let me show you how to make the patterns. Here, I transfer my basic top patterns to another piece of paper. Obviously, you have to use the patterns you want for the garment, if it's a jacket, a blouse, or whatever. For the back pattern, we will not make any modifications, but let me show you what you have to do with the front pattern. First, here you have to mark how much crossing you want for your garment. For a reference, you can check the examples I am showing you here. In the left one is about 1 inch, and in the right one is about 5 inch. So I will mark one inch here and I will mark it also over here and I will join these two points to trace a line also here to the base. Now mark the neckline depth as much as you want or take it in your body as I'm showing you in the screen. It can be an angle line or in a straight line as I am showing you. For me, I will mark it in a straight line in vertical. I will mark 5 inch, but it's up to you. And now transfer this point to the other line. And this point joined with this curve with a line in this way. And now from here, we will follow the shape of this curve, tracing this horizontal line. And I will trace a dashed line like this only for reference. And from this line to the right, mark as much as you want. This will be the width of your lapel. That means this line I am showing you here. So you decide how much you want and mark it here. I will mark one inch. Then join these two points to get your lapel. I will make a curve only for the sign. This is also up to you. Now, measure the neckline of your back pattern. Do it in centimeters because it's more exact. And transfer that measurement in this line we draw before. From that point, square a small line to the left. Mark half inch there and then trace this curve. Don't make it so pointy. And then 90 degrees angle line here. And in that line, you have to mark the width of your collar. This is completely up to you. And what are you marking here is the width of this line. In my case, I will mark 3 inch. And now from this point, we are going to draw the angle line for the notch. You can uh, make it as open as you want. And you are drawing the shape of this triangle space. So decide the angle you want and just draw a line like this. And here you have to mark the bottom width of your collar. It means this line. I will mark two inch and a half and join these two points. Now, just to show you, I am remarking this line because this is the shape of the collar and we will cut it as a piece apart in our pattern. Now cut your pattern the full shape. 
unfold this line in this way to check the shape of your collar and the lapel. It will be like this here, you can check if you like it or not. In case you want to make any modifications, you can do it now. For example, if I want to make my collar uh, not so white, I will reduce making the shape I want. Just marking it like this as I want and I will retrace it with my curved dollar. If you don't want any modification, then use it as it is. Cut the excess if you, if you decide to make any modification and there you have it. I will show you another example so you can see the variations this pattern allows you. This is wider and is straight and this I will make is thinner and is curved. Okay, now we will separate the collar part cutting by this curve and there you have the patterns for the front side. Now, now cut your back pattern, no modifications for it, only you have to check that the shoulders match. It will not match because we cut little bit when make the lapel. Correct it from the armhole side and cut the excess and there you have it, now it match. Now we are going to trace our facing piece, transfer this shape of your top pattern in this way. And here in the base mark 2 inch and in the shoulder line mark also 2 inch. Join these two points with a curve or also it can be with a straight line and cut your pattern. Now in another piece of paper you are going to transfer the top part of your back pattern in this way, center, neckline and shoulder and transfer the same width of your facing piece here if you remember is 2 inch so transfer those 2 inch all around and trace the shape this is for the facing uh, back this is small pattern now in another piece of paper transfer again your collar piece because we will need 2 of these cut it and one of these pieces I will cut it in folded fabric and I will get one piece, obviously. And this one I will get two pieces. Uh, this one you have to cut it following the thread of the fabric and this one you have to cut it on bias. That's why we will get two pieces. This is because it will fold in a more beautiful way when you construct the collar. This is Max. <laughs> And now let's cut our pieces. This is on the thread, this is on bias, and this is in the folded side of the fabric, also following the thread. Cut your pieces considering one centimeter extra for stitches. If you are a beginner, maybe you want to mark the one centimeter extra before because for this garment it's so important that all extra spaces for stitches are the same. For your back facing, also cut one piece in folded fabric, cut one back piece in folded fabric and two front pieces of your garment following also the thread of the fabric. Now let's see how to stitch it. First we are going to join these two pieces, stitching by here. And this piece we will call it under collar and the other one, the full one, we will call it upper collar. Here I have my facing pieces and the first thing I'm going to do is attach it with the back facing in this way. It has to be this shape at the end. So from the right sides of the fabric I will join these two lines. In this way I will stitch here and here. This is the shoulder lines. Once you stitch it, you will get something like this. Here you have your shoulder lines and mark the center of this piece. Matching with the center of the upper collar, the one which is full piece, you have to pin it and attach it in this way, starting from the center to one side and then from the center to the other side. Like this, now we will give a stitch all over this line. Once you have it, you have to open the seams and press it because we want to keep it flat. 
If you need, you can make some cuts on the seams, as we do when we are stitching curves, and then press everything. Keep it apart, and now here I join already the shoulders of my back and front pieces, as you can see here, and I will attach the um, under collar matching the center of the back piece and the center of my collar in this way. I start pinning from the center to one side and then from the center to another side. Once you have it, stitch all that line and you will have this. Now remove the pins and repeat the process. Also you have to open the seams and press it flat. You have to get something like this in both pieces. Now matching the right side of the fabric of your two pieces, we are going to stitch the upper collar and the under collar matching this line with this line. Just take it together, pin it if you need it and stitch it by here. Once you have it, you will get this. And now we are going to join the center line of your garment in both sides, attaching the facing piece with the front piece. Do the same in both sides. And there you have it. The only remaining thing is to stitch the notch, which is the most important thing for this garment. First you have to stitch from this side and then you have to stitch from this side. I'm going to stitch this side, but I will stop half centimeter before the corner and the same for this side. Then turn it to the right side, both the lapel and the collar. You can help with scissors to get perfect corners. And what I like to do and I recommend you is don't stitch. That's why I stopped stitching half centimeter before to get this hole. And then I finish it by hand with invisible stitch. I like to do it in this way, but if you practice, you can do it also by machine. But uh, if you do it by hand, it will give it um, more professional finishing. Make a knot in the wrong side. And there you have it. Now we have to join our two pieces of the collar. For that, we have to join, to take together these two seams. That's why we press it open. Just make a cut here in the shoulder. Take these two seams together and stitch it. To attach it from one shoulder seam to another. Since the under collar is cut and biased, I recommend you first to stitch from the center to one shoulder seam and then from the center to another shoulder seam. And there you have it, your collar is now attached. And we finish, you can see here is crossing by one inch, only attach buttons and buttonholes. And give any finishing you want for the facing, maybe fusing or invisible stitch or whatever you want. That's everything for today, Clouds. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Thank you for all your support. Don't forget to check the information box below this video because there I will give you more information and the links to my networks in case you want to contact me there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will see you the next time. Happy stitches for everyone.